And welcome to Art Expression for Stress Release and Self-Reflection. My name is Kimberly Griffiths. I'm really glad you're here with me today. Um, I am a counselor and an art therapist in Colorado Springs. And um, today we're actually going to be doing a project that I call Painting and Collaging. It's a really easy project that should only take you about an hour to an hour and a half. And it's designed to help you release stress, relax, and have some fun. But first, before we get into working on our art project, I'd like to take you through a short relaxation exercise. And this is designed to help you bring yourself to a place of calmness and to completely come to be in the moment while we're doing our art together today. So if you would please find a comfortable place to sit, either on a chair or perhaps on your couch, some place where your back, your spine can be straight, that would be great. And then just start out taking some nice, full, deep breaths. Really pulling the air into your lungs and releasing fully. Please also make sure that your arms and your legs are not crossed, that you have plenty of space to just melt right into your chair or a cushion at the couch. And close your eyes and I'll take you on a little journey. So first of all, make sure that you're breathing fully and naturally throughout this entire project. Gently move your attention away from what you're thinking to the sensations in your forehead and around your eyes. Soften and let go of any tension. Smile a little and soften your jaw. And let your shoulders feel heavy and drop away from your neck. Relax your upper arms, your lower arms, your hands and your fingers. And relax into your breath. Now place one hand over your heart and let your shoulders drop even more. Feel your breath moving your hand up and down, up and down. Now move your hand to your belly and let go and relax. Breathing in and breathing out. Now let your hands rest easily on your lap and let go of any tension in your upper legs. Soften your knees, soften your lower legs, and let your feet feel heavy and sink into the ground. Notice the feeling of breathing. Notice how your body feels as you relax and drop into relaxation. You don't need to look for any awareness. You don't need to think any particular thoughts. Just let them come and go. Settle in and stay here, just noticing your breathing for a few moments. Trust that your breath will find a natural rhythm. Now I'd like you to imagine that you have a little ball of light right at the center of your body between your heart and your belly button. Imagine this ball of light to be about the size of a ping pong ball. And as you breathe in and breathe out, the little ball starts to grow a little bit larger and a little brighter. And with every breath, the light spreads out throughout your body, feeling almost like a nice warm fluid, as if you're sitting in a warm bathtub. 
Allow this nice warm feeling to spread through your upper torso and move all the way down through your hips into your upper legs, past your knees, your shins and your calves, and all the way into your feet. And also let this warmth spread up through your chest, out through your shoulders, and through your arms. This warmth also moves up from your neck and just fills your head and allows your mind to be fully relaxed and fully present. Now bring your attention inwardly again. And I'd like you to open yourself up to feeling something that might have happened over the last week or even yesterday that made you feel a little uncomfortable or created a little bit of some anxiety. It could be as simple as feeling tense when you were driving to and from a destination. Or perhaps you got into a heated argument with a close relative or a friend. Anything that you feel that comes up into your mind right now is the right one, the right situation. And just notice how you feel as you recall some of these events. Now hold on to this feeling. We're going to use this information during our art project today. No need to judge or go into a thinking pattern. Just notice the feelings. And now come back to your breath, breathing in and breathing out, holding on to a little piece of what you just experienced. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes and we'll begin. Great, welcome back. Okay, so the project we're doing is called Process Painting. And what we're going to do is actually use the feelings that came up in that guided meditation to create a piece of art that starts out with just color on paper using paint. And then we're actually going to take the piece of paper that you will be starting with, that you will put the paint on, we're going to let it dry a little bit and then we're going to rip it up. And so those feelings of anxiety or frustration or potentially fear, we want to make sure that those are represented in the color choices that you have, in the lines and the texture of whatever you create on this piece of paper. And this is basically just a plain sheet of what I call drawing paper. You can pick this up at any art supply store and even stores like Walmart or Target will have some of this available. You can also use a piece of poster board, but something a little heavier than just copy paper usually holds the paint better. After we do that, we'll let it dry. As I mentioned, we'll go ahead and we'll tear it into pieces and you'll be surprised how good that feels when you're thinking about whatever event came up in your memory. And then we're going to take those pieces and actually create something completely new and different. So the painting part is first, and then the collaging is second. So here's a sample of one that I did a while ago using very bright colors, which is fun. And this is something I started and I didn't complete. But ba basically, this is just a very whimsical representation of something other than what I was feeling when I created the tones of red and orange in the painting. So this part of the project is going to be done on something like a 12 by 12 canvas board. Again, you can pick up packs of six or so of these at a place like Michael's. You can also buy something similar at Walmart. This is a package of three 11 by 14s, and that's a nice size to use as well. And the reason I like to use canvas board is because once you're gluing something on here, you need a little bit of some stability on the back. So 
So whatever size you decide is right for you. You'll also need some acrylic paint and you can find very inexpensive paints like this at, at Michael's just close to the register. These packets actually cost about $2 a piece. They're really inexpensive and they last a while. You can also pick up small sets of little containers of paint. This is a 12 pack that I picked up at Walmart for about $3. And you'll also need a selection of brushes. Here's a set also that I picked up at Walmart. This was closer to four, maybe 450, but it has a variety of sizes which I like to use to have handy. I also like to use a paper plate if I'm just pouring out some paint from one of these containers or a larger one. The nice thing about a paper plate is that you can throw this whole thing away and not have to worry about cleaning paint up in your sink. Super easy, just fold it up and put it in the trash can. And I also purchased this little set of plastic containers that is really easy just to pour paint into so then I can use it again for future projects. So I'm gonna use the paint from here today. And as I mentioned, we'll start out with this lighter weight piece of paper and you can place it in a horizontal position or vertical, whichever feels right to you. And I'm gonna tap into the emotions that came up during that meditation or guided experience we just did. And again, my goal is to use color to delineate a stressful experience or something that brought up some anxiety. So for me, Red has a tendency to be a color that represents anxiety. Maybe sometimes something fearful might come up and be represented in red. And basically, all I'm doing is putting color down on this paper in no particular shape. Very loosely and not very heavily in terms of the amount of paint because I do want this to dry relatively quickly. So color will represent different things to each one of you. Again, the goal is to just go with the colors that you're most attracted to using today. So I'm not going to go ahead and fill the entire sheet up right now. Just wanted you to be able to see basically what the result that I'm trying to achieve. Well, something like this, very loose and flowing, can leave white space. Again, I don't want to make this too heavy in terms of the amount of paint. And then to move things along more quickly, I'm actually going to use a hair dryer to dry it really fast. You want, you want to make sure when you're using a dryer that you Keep it relatively close to make sure that it's completely dry before you tear the paper up. towel and just check to make sure that I don't have any really wet spots left. There we go. All right, now here's the fun part. Literally, I'm just going to tear this thing up. It's very cathartic. 
<laughs> to actually rip and tear this paper. So I love this part. Sizes, shapes, don't even matter at this point. I can always choose to do smaller pieces if I want to. All right. I like that orange and red combo over here. Okay, so that's probably enough just to get started. So I'm going to use this 12 by 12 canvas board and actually I think I might put a color for the background down. I want to make sure I clean my brush out pretty well so it doesn't transfer paint colors. I like to keep a whole lot of paper towels handy for that. I'm going to start out with some green. Again, the goal for this part two is to use those pieces that were painted originally and create something completely different using those pieces in a variety of ways. I think I might put a little darker green in there just to give it a little more texture and depth. Also, wanted to mention that it's, it's a good idea to cover your table or the surface that you're working on with paper or plastic. Newspaper works just as well, just to protect the surface. Again, my goal here is to just get some color down. Of course, you could just use the white of the canvas as well if you wanted to. And then kind of a fun technique I wanted to share with you is you can literally use a piece of your paper towel and blot some of that extra paint up and it makes kind of a nice texture for the background. Take some of that darker green and mix it in over here. Okay. Now this is a little damp. So again, I'm gonna grab my handy dandy hair dryer. Oh! I have to grab those pieces. Okay, that should be dry enough. Let's see, yes. All right, so for part two, what you're gonna need is either Mod Podge, which you can find at Walmart, anywhere that sells art supplies, or even just plain white glue. You can actually buy bottles of this for like a dollar at dollar stores. And what I like to do is I make my own mixture using some of the heavier glue with just a little bit of water. It just makes it last a lot longer and it's a little bit easier, occasionally depending on the weight of the paper that you use to, to get it to lay down flat. I like to also use a brush for that. If you don't have those available, 
at least for Mod Podge, most people have just a regular glue. You can literally just glue right from the bottle. So I've got my pieces from my original painting. And I think we, I'm going to do is start with some kind of a center. And then maybe work out from there. So in some cases, I might take the time to space things out and just see exactly where I want them. Other times I might just be really spontaneous and just start putting things down no matter where they end up. I think I'll start with something like that. Use my glue mixture. And I start with putting some glue on the back. Place it down. And then just put a little extra around the edges. Sometimes when there's, there's paint on paper, it can get a little curled on the edges. So I want to use plenty of glue. And it doesn't bother me that it might spill out over the edge because it will dry clear. The fun thing about this is that I can imagine myself using my anxiety or stress represented in these red tones and I'm creating something fun and whimsical out of it. There is no possibility of doing this in the wrong way. Whatever you end up doing is absolutely perfect. The goal is to have fun and just relax. These art projects are truly designed to allow you to just be fully present in the moment and not worry about anything else that's going on in your life. Just enjoy being creative. I can always come back in later and put more glue down over the whole thing. Of course, I'll be continuing on and on as we go. And depending on how elaborate you would like to, to be with this project, this is something that you could put aside for a day and then come back and continue with and keep going. All right, we'll put down one more piece right here. That one's being stubborn. There we go. Okay, so if I wanted to, I could create a whole nother page with different colors of paint and maybe even grab some magazines and cut out some images and put that down on here. This is a, a true collage process, so you could even use words written on pieces of paper. You could use scraps of a letter. Whatever you have even around the house will work. So this is a, one of my favorite projects because it really, I can just get lost in this. And it's a wonderful way just to, again, relax and enjoy the moment. So I hope you enjoy this process as much as I do. And I really appreciate you being here with me today.
Okay, so now you've had a chance to complete your painting with the collage. At this point, I'd like you to take some time to reflect on this following question. During the guided meditation exercise, what was the challenge that came up for you? What event came to mind? And how is it reflected in your art piece? So please take some time to write your answer as fully as possible. Thank you to Bemis School of Art and the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center for allowing us to spend time together. Thanks so much and we'll see you again.